go for it. Okay, let's go ahead and get started uh, uh, with our Monday uh, media session before Florida State. Uh, Coach Passner is here with us, and Coach, if you could just get it started with a uh, some opening remarks, and then we'll start with questions. Yep. Okay. Um, obviously, uh, um, you know, had had done a lot of good things in our last two games. I kind of course corrected, as I'd like to say, after our first two. Um, you know, we we've gotten better just on practicing, just on contact practicing, which I'll con I think we'll continue to get better. Um, got a really tough game tomorrow. I think Florida State is just they're an excellent basketball team. Leonard Hamilton should be considered to be in the Basketball Hall of Fame. I think there's got to be a real serious consideration for putting Leonard Hamilton, uh, not only in the College Basketball Hall of Fame, but the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. What he's done at the University of Miami and now at the University, or now Florida State University, um, and um, has been, it's probably been a very underrated um, <clears throat> you know, coaching job. I mean, it's one of the great coaching jobs and his success um, and at all is, at all is stops. So uh, they're really, really good. And, um, you know, I think, you know, whoever does, whoever has the power to be to nominate Leonard Hamilton for the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame um, and uh, the College Basketball Hall of Fame should do that. I don't know who, how that works but um, somebody should nominate him because he deserves to be in the both basketball Hall of Fames. Now, the college basketball is in Kansas City. Obviously, Naismith's up in Springfield. I think they're really good Florida State. They're good as always. They're athletic. Uh, they can shoot it. they got great players. He's a great coach. Like I said, they're good enough to be in both the Naismith and the Hall of Fame and college basketball thing. Someone just needs to nominate him. So um, I'm, I hope that happens here sooner than later. And, and um, their teams have been good for a long time. So we'll have to play really, really well, really well, if we want to have a chance to have success. Okay, we'll start with some questions. Uh, please raise your hand in within the uh, Zoom app and uh, we'll come to you with a question. And we're gonna start with Kelly Quinlan with Rivals. Hey Josh, you have gone, kind of had a spread out schedule here to start. Now you have three games this week, does it change anything in terms of your approach going game to game? Well, Kelly, really we've got four games in eight days if you look at it because, you know, Tuesday and then all the way ends next Wednesday. So it's four games in eight days in a sense, um, um, uh, or nine days, whatever it is. But uh, um, so, yeah, no, it's the, – the break's been eight days. We have Moose had its rate. So it's eight days, four games in eight days. Moose, or uh, excuse me, the uh, the uh, the break obviously was good for us because we we got to practice Kelly with contact and clean things up, which we're a better team today than we were a couple weeks ago. Um, so we'll, we just got to keep getting better, and I think the more we keep getting better with practices, we'll continue to to have you know have a chance to have success. Um, my, um, you know, the, we, we're going to have to be really good every time we step on the floor. I haven't changed anything. I'm, I'm kind of at the point, so we're just practicing hard. We went twice on Friday, went long on Saturday, long on Sunday. And uh, today, you know, we went for a good, you know, hour 40 minutes. So because I know that we got some of these games coming up, these four games, I figure these, these four days are going to be our last, uh, you know, four days of uh, able to do multiple practices and stuff, you know, because then you're in game mode and you're in between games, you're not going to be able to do as much. So want to get a lot covered in that we could. Um, the other thing, Kelly, is um, is in regard to the ACC just in general, because, you know, we open up ACC play. I think the ACC is, is obviously from top to bottom. Anybody can beat anybody. It's a wide open league. Um, you know, going in, you probably say Virginia might have been the favorite, but, you know, obviously, they, you know, it's just because there's no home court advantage, Anybody can beat anybody. And I really think through one through 15 is strictly wide open. I think Florida State's really good. There's just a lot of good teams and it's very balanced. There's a lot of parity. This is my fifth year in the ACC. I think it's probably the most parity going into, a, into, into this league as there's been. I just think it's wide open. And, in, and Kelly, without the home court advantages, um, you know, for all, for, you know, or a lot of teams, when you have that home court advantage, it gives you a lift. 
Without that, it's just going to be really wide open this season. The floor is open. Please use the raise your hand function in uh, Zoom to um, if you have a question. And we're going to go to Ken Segura with the AJC. Hey, Josh. Um, I was wondering, um, I know you kind of like to go with a lineup of his working, but, you know, particularly against a team like Florida State that has, you know, so many, you know, a lot of length and, uh, and I'm sure down the road, is, is getting Rodney and Saba more ready to play, is that a priority or do you feel like you can play small as you have been? Um, uh, you know, Ken, no, it's a good point. And it's not just Florida State. There's a lot of teams in the ACC that are bigger. So you, you make a good point on that. And um, um, because as you, you know, not only for, for our second ACC game in North Carolina, they're big. And, and, you know, so there's a lot of teams in the league that are big. Um, so yes, we have been spending a lot of time on with Saba and Rodney to get them more ready and better. Ken, I'm, I'm high, I, I'm big fans of both. I think both are going to be really good basketball players. Unfortunately, two things happened. We, you know, or really three things be, because we didn't do the contact practicing, which included no contact and individual work. And Ken, especially for big guys, they need the contact like the, to kind of, you know, body to body to each other. And not having that all throughout the summer and the fall, that, I think that hurt them, you know, again, because we're in a global pandemic. I mean, it's just, it, it was nobody's fault. It's just, that's, we're in, a, we're in the position we're in because of, you know, the, the, the global pandemic. But, but that being also said, Ken, the second thing is, so that was one, the second thing is not having the exhibition games. Because, you know, Ken, I, in, the, in the scrimmages or an exhibition, I would have played everybody and let those guys have a lot of playing time and kind of let them play through mistakes and see. So we didn't get that opportunity because both guys needed time to play. And then third, Ken, is we, you know, I tried to play some of those guys those first two games. Obviously, we struggled. Uh, part of it was based on, on not, you know, not having the practices with contact, but also then just trying to figure out who we are. And I realized that we, at this time, we're better being small right now. So um, we'll, depending on how we're playing in that small lineup will depend if we need to go bigger or not. And so I'm fans of Saba and Rodney. They're going to be really good. I've told them they have to stay ready. This is a developmental year for both of them. They're not losing anything out of it because they get their year back. So it's almost like a red shirt year with the opportunity to still play during the red shirt year if, if, it, if it has that chance to do it. So, so we'll just see how things go. Um, and, and how it works itself out. Now, sometimes the bigger lineups, though, Ken, does have to guard us, too, on the other side of the ball. And rebounding is not always about size. Rebounding is about toughness, fight, compete, getting on the glass. Um, and, uh, you know, we had – we've and then also, obviously battling the ball is a big thing, too, taking care of the ball, having low turnovers. Okay, we'll go back to Kelly Quinlan with Rivals. I was just curious kind of what's uh, kind of Tristan's status right now and do you expect him to play this year and kind of what's the timeline there? Yeah, Kelly, he's, he's been clear to practice full up and down for the last three days. So he's been up and down. He, but he's been out for so long, it's going to take him a good month minimum to even get in the basketball shape, if that makes sense. Because remember, he's, he's had a foot injury, so, you know, you couldn't do a lot. So I'm, I don't see anything happen in December. Um, you know, I, I, I could be wrong, but, you know, the, the reality of it is, is he's going to need at least a month to get himself in physical condition to be able to play, you know, in a, in a high-level ACC game. And then after that month, you're, then you're seeing, okay, we're – how are we playing? What's the situation? Now, he's a good player, obviously. He's going to be really good, but he's got to get in shape. And uh, what I wouldn't want to do is put him in a position to re-injure himself because he's not in the, in the conditioning. And it's kind of like, you know, Kelly, he's not losing anything this year, obviously, because he gets his year back. So it's just going to be based on, you know, shape-wise and conditioning. And I, I would assume it's going to be next four to five weeks before he even really gets a full-fledged basketball shape to, or to the best – to be able to be in game shape in a sense. Next question from Ken Segura with the AJC. Hey Josh, to go back to Saba and Rodney, uh, when you said you're trying to get them ready, um, 
what in particular, or I imagine it's a variety of things, but what are some things that they, they need to be doing better? Yeah, well, we're doing a lot of, we're, we're doing, those two are getting a lot of individuals outside of practice with Coach Repineau. Um, So coaches, we're doing a lot of uh, individual skill instruction with those guys outside of just practice. Obviously for like Saba, we're getting, we're, we're doing extra lifting with him, you know, because he needs to change his body. So just, we're treating both as a red shirt year. And then during red shirt year, you're going to do more lifting, more individual skill instructions. You're going to do other stuff, even leading up to game days because you're not, you know, you're not concerned about their, you know, their stamina with their legs or anything. Now that doesn't mean they're not going to play this year. It just means that's how we're treating them both as red shirt years with the situation, knowing that they can play in games um, uh, when it's needed to be. And so I, I'm, I'm fans of both guys. I think both guys are going to be really good. It's just, they're going to continue to get better. They got to continue to stay ready. And there's going to be opportunities for them this year at some point. It's just, they got to stay ready and they got to continue to get better right now. And, and let's see how we are as we continue to play moving forward. I guess like even just as far as like knowing that, you know, the, the one, three, one and those sorts of things. And, and yeah, and that, and that takes, and that takes time. So that's, that's another thing. Uh, when I was talking about no contact, just not being able to, like they were far behind in the, in our defensive schemes, just because you can't do it without practicing with contact. So that takes time. So they're getting better with even our offensive stuff that we're trying to, some of the adjustments we've made. So those are just some things that will, that will, that they will just naturally get better through, through physical contact, body to body practice. Back to Kelly Quinlan with Rivals. Josh, I was just kind of curious um, about Michael DeVoe and kind of what your, I guess, kind of expectations are for him. Obviously the turnover is still kind of an issue for him and kind of what does he need to do to, to, to kind of get himself right, I guess. Yeah, Kelly, I mean, listen, Mike's a huge part of what we're doing. He's a high level player. He's really good. Um, this, you know, he's, he's worked his tail off all summer long, but the, the shot's going to fall for him. He, I know he's had some, Looks and he, he would obviously like to shoot better, but the ball's going to find the bottom of the hole, and uh, here sooner than later, it's it's, it's going to happen. Uh, and he's hit some big three sports, like in the first half, Nebraska they kept us in it, um, and and I thought versus Kentucky he was very elite, even though he didn't score or didn't make any shots, he was elite as in terms of his floor game, five assists, one turnover, his defense, his rebounding, and and Michael continues to learn that you can be an elite player, a high level guy without even scoring. And as he continues to understand that and buy in that, things will work itself out. So yeah, he, he knows he's got to continue to get better with battling the basketball, not turning it over, not trying to you know hit a triple or a home run, just continue to hit singles. The open man is the go-to man, continuing to just find the open guy. And we do that, good things happen for him. So, uh, but for us to be successful, we need him to be really good for us. There's no doubt about that. Let's go to Cody Chaffins with Fox 5. Cody? Coach, on paper, this matchup looks like a lot of fun, especially with the guards. Um, a couple of veteran guys and a, and a freshman there at Florida State. How do you see that, that matchup playing out? Yeah, you know, Cody, I mean, Florida State's, as I mentioned, they're really good. Um, and uh, they're well-balanced. Um, and I've, I've said it a lot in, in the past, too. I mean, we need our guards to be really good. Our guard play has to be at a very high level in order for us to be successful. And if our guard plays at a high level, then um, it gives us our best chance to, to possibly win the game. So we need our guards to play really well. And part of that, Cody, is taking care of the basketball. If we can just take care of the basketball, even if we miss open shots, but if we take care of the ball, it gives us a chance. Let's go back to Kelly Quinlan with Rivals. Josh, I was just curious kind of what your evaluation of Moses in the post has been so far. Obviously, there were some games where he played Rodney, but he's really kind of stepped into the role I guess you projected him in and kind of how you see his development so far this season. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know the deal, Kelly. Moses has gotten better every single year. I mean, from where he started, I mean, he's, he was a zero-star recruit. And to where he is now, um, you know, yep. Yeah, Zero star moves. I saw the zero there. And I saw Ken had the neck back. Like, I, gosh, he said this a thousand times. But if anyone doesn't know me, I repeat myself a lot. So if you're not, if you're not used to me repeating myself, uh, imagine if you're married to me. 
Um, so, um, and you can, that'd be another subject on my wife as she just thinks I'm annoying because I just repeat myself over and over and over. But however, uh, Moses has just gotten better through development and um, uh, he's been continuing to get better and he's, and he's been very good. And I will say this, you know, I probably didn't put him in, you know, we, we played some differently in those first couple games. He still was very successful. He had some good stats, but, but he needed even, he's better even, he's really good around the basket. And, um, and he's just playing at a high level right now, Kelly. He's, he's, he's playing at a very, very high level. And I'm really proud of Moses and his development and his engagement into the game. And, and from where he started to where he is now, it's a, it's a great story. You're on mute, Moose. You're on mute. Sorry. Uh, probably got time for one more. Let's go with uh, Ken Segura. Um, I was wondering uh, how the travel went on to Nebraska and also kind of what changes if they do anything differently to Tallahassee. And I guess also if you're going to bus down there rather than fly. Yeah. No, Ken, well, it's interesting. That we, so the travel is fine going to Nebraska. Um, um, you know, it was a little different because, you know, like when we served food or when we went to the hotel to eat, so the, 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 the hotel people served the food um, and um, there's plexiglass all over, you know, the place. So, um, um, and so, you know, beforehand, previous to pre-COVID, you'd go in there and just serve your own self, you know, you, but not now. Um, um, and going to Tallahassee, we're going to take two buses so we can spread out. Uh, we're going to bus down and bus back, and um, uh, we'll bus right back after the game. And, um, you know, we'll continue to, to monitor to what we need to do. Of, of I, I thought we did a good job in Nebraska, and we'll continue to monitor. I mean, like after the game in Nebraska, it took us a while to get to the plane because we, you know, we, we, we couldn't eat on the bus. Uh, they wouldn't let us eat on the bus, so uh, medical. And um, so that was a change because that, that delayed your ability to get back home quicker. Um, and um, so all those type of things are just day by day. So we'll bust down to Tallahassee and bust back after the game. And um, I mean, other places we'll fly to uh, just because of the, the length. I, I assume unless there is something that we needed a bus, but for right now, but for this trip, Clemson trip at UAB, you know, we'll, we'll use those as bus trips. Okay, Coach, thanks a lot for being with us today, and uh, we'll get Mike to vote here in just a minute. Okay.